Can you see the flyer on full screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So I think we can start. And um, Karina or Mari, could, can you admit everyone? <laughs> because I cannot see now. Hi everyone, uh, we're about to start. Um, let's just wait for 30 seconds more as people are coming in now. Thanks for being here. All right, so let's begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Little Book of Green Nudges webinar, webinar session. Um, before we begin, um, I'd like to share a few housekeeping updates. Uh, the session will be recorded and it will be made available on our YouTube page. Uh, let me just quickly share uh, um, the link with you. Uh, you're currently muted, but please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box or by raising hands. And after the presentations, you're more than welcome to share your experience from your campus too. Um, today's webinar will begin with a speaker from RAP, Dr. Richard Ronald, followed by representatives from four universities in Europe and Asia, Dr. Poonam Kumria from Miranda House University of Delhi in India, Mr. David Nuttall from Harper Adams University uh, in the UK, uh, Ms. Anya Stoll from Keck Business School in France and Dr. Joel Hossel from University of York in the UK. Uh, we'll then have a Q&A session and open discussions among all participants. Uh, we're inviting anyone who would like to share their experience in the future webinars, so please reach out to us. Um, so let us begin um, our first webinar of the Green Nudges series. Uh, welcome to the pilot campuses and those who are 
simply interested in, in this concept. Um, thanks for being here today. Um, as you may know, this um, all started with the Little Book of Green Nudges we published a little over a year ago um, in partnership with the Behavioral Insights team and Grid Arundel. And this is UNEP's first on behavioral science and nudge theory, which focuses on human actions and how to change them. Some of you have directly contributed to this book uh, by providing case studies of nudging interventions. The book contains 40 simple nudge options that make it easier to make green choices, which university campuses can deploy to encourage students and staff to embrace more behavior, uh, sustainable behaviors. Green nudging is a powerful yet gentle uh, push to persuade sustainable behavior. Over 200 million students are currently enrolled in higher education system. University represents a key timely moment for intervention as students are establishing habits and routines in many aspects of their life. So whether you are a student association or a staff member, you are the driving force of a huge shift in the individual lifestyles. Food has been the most popular category of this project. In terms of a lifestyle perspective, the food domain has uh, the largest impact on the environment, putting pressures for biodiversity, as well as human health. In the book, we featured some nudge examples, such as making plant-based dishes more appealing um, or serving smaller plates by default. There's so many ways um, we can reverse the food system to to more sustainable ones. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Richard Flannell, International Engagement Director of RAP. Uh, RAP is a UK-based not-for-profit non organization which uh, works with various organizations and governmental bodies to create economic and environmental value from reducing food waste and green gas ed, uh, emissions and tackling issues around water stress across the supply chain. Richard is an environmental scientist with a strong track record of leading teams with, um, tackle, um, which tackle plastic pollution, reduce food waste and deliver more sustainable practices within businesses. He leads RAP's international work, working with partners in over 25 countries to deliver systemic change, particularly within the food system. Richard, the floor is yours. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm just going to uh, share uh, my presentation. Um, can I just check uh, that you can all see that OK? Not yet. Uh -huh, OK, that's interesting. Let me just do that again. Uh, so, uh, so let's try. Yes, that's worked. Is that nice and clear now? Yes, perfect. Lovely, great. And thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm going to talk about the trouble with food and what can we do about it. And as you've already heard, you know, food is one of the areas that has the biggest impact on the environment. And I'm going to look into that in a little bit more detail um, and also then start drawing some conclusions as to what we can do about it and why we need to prioritise this. And um, just to add a little bit uh, RAP, RAP is, as, as you've heard, is a, a UK not-for-profit organisation which has the, uh, the vision of a world in which resources are used sustainably. And we're particularly interested in three core areas, food and driving a more sustainable food system, uh, plastics, reducing plastics pollution around the world and tackling fast fashion, particularly textiles. And in essence, what we, we try to do is, is turning science into mass behaviour change in businesses and in the home. And currently we're working in around 25 countries. And just to give you an idea of how we work, we try to take a systemic approach, reinventing how we design and produce products to reduce their environmental impact, rethinking consumption and use. And that's going to be one of the main themes from today's presentation. And then making the best use of anything that does arise of waste so they can go back in, into the economy as, high, as productively as possible thereby reducing uh, greenhouse gases, reducing waste and reducing water use. And one of the things we do is put together partnerships, partnerships of businesses right across the food system, for example. And one of those partnerships is called the Courtauld Commitment, based in the UK. And in three years, um, one of the, uh, the iterations of Courtauld, Courtauld 2, helped reduce 
waste, um, that's food waste and packaging waste by 1.7 million tonnes, which is enough to fill 184,500 refuse trucks, which if landed up end to end would stretch from Edinburgh to Geneva to give you an idea of the scale. So one of the things I wanted to say just about this is that we can change things and there is a track record around the world of changes happening within the food system. OK, so let's just come back to the fragile earth we all live on. We do know that you know, at these times we've got real challenges ahead. Not only have we got to get over the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but we have to tackle global warming. And we have COP26 coming up as a sort of pivotal moment in trying to put ourselves on a trajectory uh, to net zero so that we can achieve something around to, to limit climate change to 1.5 degree. Now that's going to be an absolutely huge challenge. And what's critical is what do we have to do to achieve that? Well, when we look at the planetary boundaries that are being exceeded on our fragile planet, the areas that have been highlighted by, by scientists, by uh, Rockstrom and his colleagues, is in four key areas. Climate change, I've just mentioned, where we're obviously already above the ecological ceiling for the planet. Biodiversity loss, we're at a sixth extinction at the moment in terms of uh, biodiversity loss. Land conversion, already way above the ecological ceiling as well. And nitrogen and phosphorus loading. And what's really interesting about this is when we think about global warming, often we think in terms of decarbonizing the electricity networks, we think about uh, home insulation, we think about uh, decarbonizing gas grids, um, uh, electric vehicles, decarboning trans transportation. But when you look at those four areas, food is a critical driver of the reasons why we're above the ecological ceiling in all those areas. And we don't often think about the relationship between food and climate change and biodiversity loss, but it's huge. So just to give you an idea, yeah, on, in terms of global warming, food accounts for around 30% of uh, global greenhouse gas emissions. Absolutely enormous. Uh, in terms of nutrient overloading, um, about 70% of that is attributable to food production. Land conversion, around 60% is attributable directly to food production. And in terms of biodiversity loss, estimates suggest around 60%. So if we are going to actually move to a more sustainable future, one of the things we absolutely have to do is to tackle food. That's absolutely crucial. And, you know, some research that came out of Cambridge University um, suggested that if we if if actually we don't actually tackle food, then food supply alone could contribute to two degrees to global warming by 2050. So reinforcing the fact that we have to act. And what's also fascinating about this is the scale of the challenge that we have at the moment. So let's just take food waste. For around every two tons of food that we eat on this planet, around another ton is wasted. That's a huge level of inefficiency. And tackling food waste is one of the key areas that we can actually do to deliver a more sustainable food system. Just to give you an idea of the scale of that, financially, it's well over a trillion dollars which is well over the, um, uh, the uh, uh, annual turnover of Nestle, 10 times the annual turnover of Nestle, the world's biggest food manufacturer. Environmentally, food waste accounts for between 8 and 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And so the interesting thing there is, is if food waste was a country, it would be the third biggest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions on the planet behind the US and China. And this is against a backdrop of where around one in nine people go hungry every single night. Another key area that we need to think about is actually healthy, sustainable eating. Now, what's quite interesting is when you look at the guidance that's around the world, this is one I particularly picked from the UK's Food Standards Agency, but there are replicas all around the world in North America, in Europe, in, in Asia, in, in essence saying that uh, our diets are not uh, 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 calibrated to being as healthy as possible um, and equally if we did adopt the healthy lifestyle that's indicated the balance of food that's indicated here that would be a much more sustainable and a much less carbon intensive diet so there's synergies here between if we move towards a healthier diet we are actually going to be moving towards a more sustainable diet and one of the key things there is actually eating more plants and actually in many societies around, not all globally, but in many societies, we're actually eating more red, wheat, red meat that is healthy for us. So eating more plants is a key way of doing it, but actually getting the balance right is a key thing that we can all do. Now you think, okay, I've mentioned food waste reduction, 
and I've mentioned healthy, sustainable eating and eating more plant rich diets. What impact can they have really at a global scale? Well, when you look at the Project Drawdown research, uh, they rank a, a whole range of interventions uh, that actually can help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and deliver the net zero future that we're looking for. And interestingly, the third and fourth strategies, so reducing food waste is the third most effective strategy and eating plant-rich diets is the fourth most, uh, most impactful strategy globally, in fact, of driving change. So tackling food waste, encouraging plant-rich diets, making a more sustainable food system isn't working at the periphery of challenging and tackling climate change. It's front and centre as being some of the key things that we can all do to actually reduce the um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So what can we all do today? Well, here's just a few thoughts from me, just things that we can do. We can buy what we need and eat what we buy and aim for zero edible food waste. The SDG target is halving food loss and waste by 2030. Well, perhaps we can go beyond that and aim for, net, for zero edible food waste in the things that we do in every day. Share anything you can't eat. Um, eat less meat, more plants where that's relevant. Uh, in many societies, that's, that's, uh, that is the case and that will actually lead to more healthy diets. Buy more sustainable food. That's quite a difficult one to, to do at the moment. There are some schemes like the Marine Stewardship Council schemes uh, that uh, indicate sustainability. But I was encouraged the day that the Sustainable Food Trust announced a global farm metric to assess them and measure the sustainability of food and farming. And that could help us going forward. And of course, the other thing is recycle all inedible uh, food, food waste, and indeed any packaging that's coming out from that process um, and reuse as much as you can in that process. And there is help out there. So, for example, there are a number of campaigns around the world. One of them is Love Food, Hate Waste, which actually has lots of guidance as to how people in our homes, in our universities, how can we actually reduce food waste? And here's a classic example of using toast and converting toast into small pizzas as a way of using up what you've got left in your fridge. Make toast, not waste. Now, this can make a big difference. So one of the things you're thinking about is, oh, can we really change things? Well, yes, we can. So when you look at UK data between 2007 and 2018, the interventions that have occurred in the UK have helped reduce edible food waste by 27 percent. That's 1.7 million tonnes a year less food waste, valued at around six billion US dollars per year. And the bulk of that has come from household food waste, 1.4 million, which is 31 percent per person less. Then there's some in the supply chain. And at the same time, um, the, in, we've actually increased the amount of food redistributed to those in need by fourfold, up to 133 million meals equivalent per year. And similar numbers in, in the Netherlands, we've got about 28% reduction per person less. In Denmark, you've got numbers that are around between 8 and 10%. So this is uh, that, you know, we can make a difference in this space and evidence suggests it does work. So just to draw some uh, conclusions. We can make a difference today by tackling uh, and drive, uh, tackling food and actually driving to a more sustainable food system by changing what we buy, changing what we eat and reducing what we waste and making these a social norm for all of us going forward is got to be a target we all need to aspire to encouraging our friends our families and making sure that it's a, a standard way um, of us behaving so that we can help deliver a net zero greenhouse gas emissions and i just wanted to leave you with a final thought um, Sadly, yesterday, Michael Collins, who was the uh, an Apollo 11 astronaut who who got to stay in the command module and go round the moon, he died sadly yesterday. But he made a, a very interesting statement uh, when he came back from Apollo 11 mission, and he said, "I used to think that the Earth was a rugged place, having seen it from a great distance. I have the feeling now that it is small and it is interconnected." And have the feeling that we go about our business without caring for the fragility of the earth. Well, I think we need to change that. And I think we need to change that now to make a difference every day by the choices that we all make. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Swannell. And thank you so much for the beautiful ending as well.
Um, we really appreciate this insightful information. It's it's really astonishing uh, to see um, the food contribution to this planet and how much is preventable by just reducing food waste and eating well. Um, something we can add today, really. Um, our small mindset change can create ripple effects on bigger change, uh, bigger impact. Miranda House Campus, University of De Delhi in India, is doing exactly that by mobilizing students and faculty members to take wide range of actions in a strategic way. Please welcome Dr. Poonam Kumri, Associate Professor at Miranda House Campus, University of Delhi in India. Poonam, please tell us how your campus is rolling out green nudges around food waste and sustainable diet. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I, I would like to share my slide. Can I do that? Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, everyone, uh, UNEP Nudges and uh, uh, Mari. And we, because for, for the past uh, few months, I think from January onwards, uh, we have been working and I have been uh, forwarding what work we are doing in Miranda House. And due to pandemic, there are so many uh, issues uh, that we wanted to carry out uh, on the ground, but uh, we were not able to do it till now. But uh, I would like to thank uh, UNEP Najis that students really enjoyed working this and they have learned a lot. This is the feedback I have got from them. And uh, the best thing is that it's not only that they uh, made this an aware awareness program for others, they also have learned it. And uh, we have done a lot of changes in between. And uh, since uh, we have uh, touched all the nudges in terms of our awareness program, I am here just uh, concentrating on, on the food, uh, the two nudges that is uh, sustainable diet and uh, reducing food wastage. So this is campaign is uh, we have done online as well as offline mode. And uh, first, when I started this campaign, we just thought, thought of uh, Miranda House campus, just the MH community. We, we were not thinking of going uh, out of the walls of Miranda House. But later on, when we were working on this, then uh, and going through the uh, little LBG and book continuously, I think I have read the, this book many times to understand the philosophy and the concept and the paradigm uh, that is there as part of the um, changing behavior. Um, this, this, uh, uh, instigate me to carry out things outside the campus also. So uh, we uh, decided to do it in a phases, first phase within the campus, second phase requesting other colleges, because I think there are more than 85 institutions in uh, University of Delhi and we are just one of them. So we thought maybe after uh, setting as an example what Miranda House is doing, we, are, we will ask other undergraduate colleges also to join us uh, and then requesting the university administration doing it in sort, sort of a officially or legally calling all the colleges to join this movement. So uh, this way we started doing this. And uh, as I said that, uh, uh, just a minute, I think I have, um, I hope I'm audible. As I have just said yes. that uh, in this, we are talking about uh, two uh, nudges, sustainable diets and food, uh, reduce food wastage. Uh, this was uh, the nudges that we were concentrating. And the first thing was that uh, we need to change. We have to look what are the, our objectives and we, we need to find the problem. Where is the problem? Uh, because uh, we have three cafeterias and then we have hostel mess. So uh, individually, we, we have looked for the point sources. What are the sources where the problem exists and what is the volume of the problem? What type of problem is there? So slowly and slowly, I think it took us a month to identify the things to before we finalize our program, our plan and the timeline, how to go about it. So. Uh, this is a functional structure uh, we uh, created. Uh, we had a team, team of uh, 59 students, plus uh, I was there continuously. We were having a discussion with the students. And this uh, team, uh, I divided into two uh, groups. One was a green nudge group uh, that includes around uh, 13 students and three teachers, including me. And uh, then the disaster management group. See, uh, what I have done, the 
advantage I had that I had included this whole uh, movement awareness program as part of a curriculum because I was teaching a paper on uh, disaster management, which is a practical paper. Usually, we every year we go outside to different states to identify to study the different disasters, and then we do a local report also. So each year I concentrate on Miranda House. We discuss different disasters and we work on these issues. But this time we thought that we we can take this issue as disaster risk reduction uh, through green actions. So we included all these LVGN issues and we divided the whole 59 students, whole class of 59 students into different aid groups, which has been provided by the uh, UNEP Najis uh, pilot program. So. This disaster management uh, group, they, they, I think in each group, there were on a minimum six to eight students. They were working uh, on different nudges. So, uh, and in green nudge group, what we, uh, even I was selective in that particular group, uh, we have, you, I have taken union members so that I can connect with each and every one in the college because it's easier to connect when you have some uh, e officials with you. And then each member of uh, eight groups that we have divided into the whole class. So because every time it's, it was very difficult to call 59 students if you have some ideas and if you want to discuss it. So we divided the whole thing into two different groups. And we were running this program online, offline. And in the end, I have asked them to do the assessment of their uh, awareness campaign. Uh, I think we had discussion also with the... Uh, UNEP Najis and uh, others in the uh, in this program regarding uh, maybe we will be able to do it uh, on on uh, on the ground also as much as fast or rigorously we have done online but due to pandemic uh, that that area was a little bit uh, slow uh, from our side but online what we have done uh, we targeted uh, in Miranda House we have more than more than 4500 students and for for one month intensively every day we every day we send the message uh, posters awareness quotes uh, opinion polls to everyone as part of the who are all part of the miranda house uh, institution and uh, that includes uh, faculty as well as uh, staff and 4000 more than 4500 students so we we had an idea before we start making changes because uh, last year also we have done a campaign on uh, banning a single use plastic and we were successful that students because the campaign was run by the students so we were easily able to make changes in our cafeteria which we tr we were trying for the past two three years because of the economy we were not able to do it but when the students came in the front we were able to do it so what we have done we thought before we go to the ground that's set start and simultaneously Spontaneous process of uh, uh, explaining everyone about the what we are doing, whether they are part of it or not. Since people are not going to the university right now, they are not visiting Miranda House, so they should know what is happening and how they are feeling uh, about uh, this whole uh, program. So WhatsApp group, emails to all union bodies, and we have different kind of cultural societies. So there is a repetition also individual mails, individual WhatsApps to cultural societies. And uh, we, we even created Instagram accounts and also uh, forwarded all these messages, posters to other Instagram accounts also, which are associated with Miranda House. As well as students have also organized webinars um, uh, at their own level to talk to their friends uh, in the end regarding when they were doing the assessment of their program. and. We have also uh, included later on in the Green Nudges uh, uh, union member from Miranda House uh, Student Union to contact to the all the other student unions of the university around uh, uh, in the North North Campus as well as the uh, Delhi University Student Union. This is which is an umbrella body of uh, student union in the university. Offline, we students have gone to the college. Uh, they stick the posters. They had discussion and interaction with the student staff. And we also have a detailed uh, discussion with the cafeteria staff because uh, we need to know the uh, economy behind uh, the changes which we want to have uh, through the environmental uh, impacts. So all those things assessment we have done uh, before we uh, 
started our campaign so with the sustainable diet the objective was to promote healthier alternatives which we already had in us luckily i shall say that uh, we had already had many things that is we call it as a green diets as part of our uh, uh, food and uh, but then there were certain things so we went to the cafeteria we had discussion with the students as well as with the person uh, people who are running the cafeterias uh, and uh, with the hostel mess uh, um, administrator administrations so uh, we uh, tried to uh, not to impose things on the students because uh, this this is another way we can do it that we come up with a uh, sort of a administrative directive that we have to do it and then we just do it because last year when we had the we were running about the plastic uh, single use plastic ban so i realized that it is banned in miranda house but i don't know whether my students many of my students are following the same norm when they are outside the miranda house so looking into the green nudges behavioral changes to to changing the societal norms so i thought maybe uh, we we must uh, not on just come up with the directives which is easier we can do it but instead of that we must talk to the students and uh, take their opinion and involve them so that it is a sort of a successful uh, program Uh, and also uh, we 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 had a discussion uh, through our posters to our instas and awareness program that uh, what uh, telling them what are the sustainable diets what we have to we 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 should try and we also came up with we have i'll show you later on in the slides we have taken their opinion to make whether if we declare uh, friday as a friday no friday and we must uh, have an uh, day as where we are just uh, constant rating on uh, plant based food and uh, so these are the things which we have asked we have taken their opinion and we have talked to the people in the administration and cafeteria to implement all those things as part of uh, sustainable diets so uh, if i'll say them a sustainable my uh, sorry uh, dr kamriya could you could you hurry up a little bit sorry yes we yes sorry. i'll just do that so it's like uh, this is just a survey uh, we have done that and if you say that uh, yes i'll just say that people really students really agree that changes we want to make in the um, canteen they were very happy and they very cooperative another was the reduced food wastage we realized that food wastage is not in the cafeteria uh, but it's in the hostel of our uh, college and because identification was very important we do have vermi composting plants so all, all the wastage that is there in in the university in the mh campus is already going to the plant but still the only the place where the food wastage is there is a hostel mess and we try to talk to the people and uh, we try to uh, convince them how to do it to find out the work so what we we realize that it is uh, uh, in hostel the food is getting wasted and it's only due to the taste students think the taste is not good so they don't eat it and many times it happens they say that they will take it and then they don't turn up to eating the food so what we uh, we thought that uh, we should have a pre enumeration so that we can count who all are taking the foods and who are not not taking the foods and try to talk to the different committees uh, we are just doing that so that we can talk about how to make a good food that students to like that so there is a less wastage of food uh, that's all from miranda house side and uh, i think uh, all the changes in the green behavior leading to our green actions and road to sustainability so individual action is very important thank you so much thank you so much dr kumria and sorry for um taking in a hurry um there's so much more we can hear from me actually um now um who else is better positioned to witness and manage green nudges around the field on campus and those who manage catering it's an absolute pleasure to welcome mr david nuttall head of catering and retail at harper adams university in the uk the world uses 500 billion plastic cups every year harper adams was the first university campus in the uk to remove single use cups Congratulations David and Harper Adams University. Let us hear more about it. David, the floor is yours. Hello, thanks thanks very much everybody and thanks very much for the invite to speak. I'll just try and share my screen now. And 
hopefully that's worked. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, um, Harper Adams. Yeah, we're an agricultural university, um, teaching things like land-based, you know, animals, food, that kind of thing. So the students are really on board with everything we do around the sustainability push. So. The problem we highlighted was was coffee cups, disposable coffee cups. Um, I'm quite sad, really. I sit in some, most of my cafes and watch uh, customers and how they react and then how they behave. And they go to the, the refuse bins with a cup of, cup of coffee and they kind of look at the bins. Is it cardboard? Is it plastic? Is it food waste? Not quite sure. So it just generally went in uh, a general waste. So it was a really frust real frustration of ours. So we wanted certainly to reduce single use cups. Um, we did a trial back in 2019 and it was supported through the Shrewsbury Cup Initiative and um, AgriEP, which is an innovation hub on site. And the idea with this is that in Shrewsbury, it's a town close to the university, and this one cup travels around the whole town. So each cafe, whether it be a branded Starbucks or a Costa, the idea is you, you buy the cup, and you can use the cup in any of the cafes and you can take the cup back to any of these cafes and get your deposit back. So the technology behind the cup is a Coretto cup. I'll, I'll go on to that in a second about how um, it reduces the car carbon footprint of, of regular single use cups. Um, and the trial went really well, so well that we decided in September, the start of term 2019, to remove all single use cups on campus. And it's quite a brave decision, a bit frightening, but it went really well. Um, and uh, yeah, we've kind of never looked back until COVID hit, unfortunately. So yeah, I did make the claim that we were the first university in the country to remove single use uh, cups and nobody pulled me up on it. So um, I hope it's true. Um, this was also a drive as well to, to support the regional, you know, the council and the town that we live in to reduce plastic, because as we all know, single use, plastic, um, single -use cups are, are plastic lined. This is a quick info infographic that we used on campus. So you choose your cup, you pay a pound, um, you can use it as many times as you like, or you can return it back to one of the cafes and return your pound. Um, and also it eliminates the, the single use cup waste um, at the university. The students did need quite a bit of hand holding to get through, um, you know, that's why we did the trial really. Um, but they soon, they soon got on board with it and it, it works really well. This is a simple um, diagram around the, the CO2 emissions of, of a single use on the far right hand side, a single use cup compared to the Coretto cup that we use. And, and you can see it's obvious that it, it, we use it, on, we estimate there's 365 usages of, of this one cup uh, before it has to be disposed of. So in a year, we have a saving of around four to six thousand disposable cups per year um, pre-COVID and um, you know we're not a massive campus we're not a huge 20,000 student campus we're only you know three or four thousand on site so we're, we're quite small but it does make a difference. The some of the um, particular hurdles we had to overcome the costs really so it costs us around 80 pence for the cup um, with the branding on it with the university logo uh, about 86 pence so by charging a pound, it just really covers its own cost. Um, and, it, and it factors in the fact that we might lose some along the way. Pitfalls, there are very few really. Um, loss of coffee branding, I suppose. We have a Costa coffee, strong brand on site. We have uh, uh, two more coffee brands. So we, we lost their disposable cup kind of branding that they like to see. Um, but, you know, that's just one of the things that we lost along the way. Again, I touched on customer education and they did need quite a bit of handholding initially, but they soon got on board. And then COVID hit. So uh, COVID was um, didn't put a stop to things. Um, we just, you know, the whole cross contamination of handing over cups, that kind of thing slowed down. So the way we got around that is that you, we dumped the cup. So the, by the till point, they just put the cup in a, in a dump bin and then they get a fresh one. So there's no kind of pa passing to and fro. The pounds were a tricky bit. They uh, they get a pound back, and because of COVID, we've gone completely cashless. Um, so we're actually working on a, on a system now where they we have a voucher system. Their ID card, we can put um, a pound on that card, um, and then they can redeem it that way. 
So yeah, it's worked really well, and I'm happy to answer as many questions that m might come come through. But I think in conclusion, it was quite frightening to do. But in conclusion, just kind of be bold, be brave, and just do it. And and I think that's the best way to to to, to nudge these kind of students and customers uh, in the way you want to go. Thank you, Miss Nessel. Um, I think you got a question from um, Anya about uh, who watches the crypto cops and whether they the users watch them. So yeah, so we wash them on site um, in, in uh, dishwashers. So we've got they go through industrial um, catering dishwashers, so they reach you know temperatures of eighty degrees, just like a normal crockery cup would be washed. Yeah. Thank you. It's just amazing to see the achievement of the university in tackling the reduction of single-use plastic cups. And imagine all 100 plus universities in the UK and around the world uh, will follow um, your initiative. Um, it's also great to see how um, this is supporting surrounding communities too. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, Marseille campus of Paris Business School in France has been facing its campus as a sustainable community as we speak. Like earlier this month, uh, a little Book of Green Nudges uh, project was featured in CNN program. Uh, Miss Anya Saul, Senior Project Manager for a CSR at Hedge Business School, was interviewed um, in a segment and shared the, um, their years of efforts uh, to tackle food waste issues. Uh, she will share the video clip with you. Anya, please take the floor. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to speak today. Hello, everyone um, from South France, from my side. I'm working for Cage Business School on the Marseille campus. And uh, we're highly involved with um, the little bit book of green nudges, having tested already a couple of green nudges on the campus. And uh, we were invited to do um, an interview to a documentary by CNN the other day uh, within the documentary series called uh, Tomorrow Transformed where we were able to uh, uh, showcase two of our nudges, one of one of them being um, a food waste nudge, which is um, our compost system that we've put in place. So what I would suggest is um, I will show you the video. It's only three minutes and then I will go a little bit into um, what has been uh, the challenges that we met uh, when setting up those nudges. I hope this works. Uh, let's see. No, that's not it. One second. Oh, where is it now? Oh, here we go. Sorry. Challenges here. Tack. Yeah. There we go. You should see it now. Yes, we can see. Uh, we don't have the sound. Anya. Oh, it's the sound missing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me do this again, sharing my screen with videos are always a little bit challenging. Include the sounds. Here we go. Let me go again here. Richard called these better decisions nudges. Yes, perfect. We store options that promote positive choices without being too pushy. Redesigning a cafeteria, let's say, to make fruit and vegetables more prominent can prompt diners towards healthier meals, but not force them. Just these simple things. They're simple, they're, they're cost effective, and uh, they lead people in the right direction. That's why the United Nations Environment Program didn't just publish 40 sustainable nudges, but disperse them to universities, places where this small book might have the biggest impact. There's 250 million higher education students globally. So one of the reasons why the little book of Green Nudges is so powerful is that it connects with students at a time when many of them are drastically changing their habits. Before publishing last year, the UN worked with behavioral specialists and studied 46 campuses with nudges already in place, like the Kedge Business School in Marseille. We started implementing our first nudges about five years ago. What we learned is that a little nudging takes people a long way. Kedge started small, with little signs and brighter recycling bins. But soon, they looked towards an even tinier source of problems. One cigarette butt pollutes about 500 liters of water every year. There were regular ashtrays, but people would still stomp out their cigarette butts on the floor. 
So they gave the ashtrays a makeover. They're brightly yellow, so you can't miss them. And position them better. In strategic areas where people go for smoking. But most importantly, they started asking questions. People drop uh, their cigarette in the, the area that corresponds to uh, their answer. Making it fun has really made a difference. Really? We collect every year 200,000 cigarette butts, both on our Marseille campus and our Bordeaux campus. Those butts get properly recycled and that allows us to preserve the equivalent of 40 Olympic size swimming pools in fresh water. The school also increased composting when campus was fully open pre-COVID by nudging students to separate their cafeteria waste. Anya says this simple switch created 1.8 metric tons of compost a year, which went directly back into the gardens. Sometimes it's difficult for people to play their active role because it's inconvenient or it's not at the right time, it's not at the right place. So more it's fun and more it's easy to yeah. access in people yes. will act. Right now, nearly 120 universities across the world are piloting the UN's green nudges. And if these students personally pick up sustainable habits, imagine the impacts that could have on the places they go on to work. Okay, I hope all this came through properly. <laughs> um, so those two nudges that we highlighted. Is Thank you, Anya. Did you did you want to add something? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, there was another video that just uh, went on. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is our little chat, uh, uh, the little uh, input that we could uh, give uh, uh, through the little book of green nudges. What I would like to add is the challenges that we met by putting up the food waste, um, the food waste scenario. Um, what you can't see in the in the in the picture uh, that has been filmed by CNN is the fact that there's uh, there's work that's done before in order to um, help people to reduce the amount of food they take, so they're not any. Uh, edible food waste, as Richard said earlier on. So we, people only take the food that they really want to take in the cafeteria and they really want to finish. So smaller plates and the possibility of uh, getting a second if, you, uh, if you're if you still hungry for free. So that, that's that's before we start um, getting into the nudge of the food waste and the food waste, um, the, the area where the people uh, basically um, separate their food waste from uh, other other waste that might uh, occur on a, on a tray in a cafeteria. Our main challenge is that people really put it in the right bins. <laughs> sounds sounds easy, but uh, there's quite a lot of stuff that or, that um, ends up in the wrong bins. Uh, we find plastic in the in the compost, so we have to sift it through um, twice a year. Uh, but it's that's about the only challenge uh, that we had in terms of uh, helping people to get into the um, behavior of um, of uh, selecting their food waste from their ordinary waste and. Um, it's, it's also been interesting how we, we were able to um, uh, to make uh, students and uh, staff contribute to what we do on a campus uh, on the compost. So twice a year, um, there's sort of a community day on campus where students and staff contribute to turning around the compost, uh, sifting it through, getting the bags ready for the gardeners or for the students and staff to take it home. So it's kind of a community activity that we do on campus that is linked to that um, compost and food waste area. And uh, this one has been set up in Marseille and we're busy setting up right now uh, another one in uh, in Bordeaux. And um, if I speak about 1.8 metric tons of food waste that is uh, turned, no, sorry, nine tons of food waste, nine tons of metric, uh, nine metric tons of food waste that are transformed into 1.8 metric tons of compost, that's not all edible food waste. It's important to know that uh, since the cafeteria prepares food on site, uh, most of that is actually uh, the scrapes of uh, preparing the food, the fresh food, etc. So it's not all edible food because it sounds it sounds horrendous to imagine that we have nine tons of uh, edible food waste every year. Um, the biggest part of it is uh, the scraps from the cafeteria. But still, the idea of uh, making people contribute, of separating their food waste and uh, having them doing that themselves also shows them, you know, what are they throwing away? They actually look at their plate and they're not just putting their plate on a tray and somebody else uh, throws it away. They throw it away and they kind of had then the idea of, okay, I have only eaten half my plate, so maybe next time I take not 
the full plate. I only take half a plate. So that also would, um, helps them to change their behavior uh, with regards to what they take in the cafeteria. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Anya and Kedgy Business School. As you can see that Miranda Harris's University of Delhi, University of Bursa in the UK, uh, Libra University in Colombia were also featured. Uh, the link to this whole program is also um, co uh, pasted in the chat box. So feel free to watch it. And then ours starts at nine minutes in. Um, nudging interventions are actually fun for everyone and your creativity plays a major part of um, making it successful. University of York in the UK used a unique scheme across all 20 of its campus and uh, reduced single-use uh, cuts, influencing nearly 6,000 university students living in college uh, on site. Dr. Jo Hossel, Sustainability and Inclusivity Engagement Officer, will share with us how her scheme managed to save over 400,000 disposable cuts and also to raise funds. Jo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was, I was just struggling to uh, hit my um, unmute button there. So I'm just sharing my screen. I hope uh, people can see that if somebody can actually tell me whether they can, because I've actually can't see Microsoft Teams at the moment, which is a bit of a yeah, um, see right. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so let me just get my notes up. So, yes. Um, as it said, we, we're running a similar scheme to uh, David in the sense that we've introduced a, a reusable cup onto campus, which um, because we're at the University of York, we call the York Cup. Um, but it's slightly different from the way that uh, David is, is running his scheme. And unfortunately, we can't claim to have removed all disposable cups from usage across campus. So the problem we have had in the past is that um, we have used 400,000 single-use disposable cups per year across campus. We have um, 20 cafe outlets on campus. We're a residential campus, so 6,000 of our 18,000 students actually live on campus. So what we wanted to do was try and encourage uh, reusable cup use. And we chose a two-pronged approach uh, to make reusables an easy choice. As Anya was saying, if, if people are, um, are able to do things more simply, they will tend to take that choice. But at the same time, we introduced a financial penalty for those who chose not to make use of a reusable cup. But we have then used that penalty, we ring fenced it, to make sure that it benefits sustainability. So the... Um, before we went down the road of, of a cup loan scheme, what we did was look at the options. We did a whole life costing on the different cup options we could choose, including um, compostables and recyclable cups. The option that we chose was not the cheapest, but as far as we were concerned, it was the most sustainable. So um, a your cup is essentially a bamboo and resin cup uh, with a silica sleeve and a silica lid. Um, we procured um, a large number of these to begin with using a consortium, including three other higher education institutions. So we started with a stock of 20,000 your cups. Um, the other institutions in the consortium actually gave their cups away or sold them. Um, but our scheme, as I say, is a your cup. And basically what we're getting people to do is to buy into the scheme. They can buy a cup for five pounds. They can make use of that cup themselves. They can take it off campus. They can keep it as far as we're concerned. That's fine. That's the, their cup. It comes with a free drink. But what they can also do with that cup is return it to any of our cafe outlets across campus. They keep the silica sleeve. And next time when they want a drink, they show the sleeve and they get their drink served in your cup. When the scheme was uh, introduced in January 2019, we actually didn't do a trial of it. We just went straight in and introduced it. Um, and when we first introduced the scheme, we also gave a discount of 20 pence for anyone using a reusable usable cup, whether it was your cup or not, to try and encourage people to get into the habit of thinking about having a reusable cup. We ran a lot of social media to support the scheme using the hashtags that you can see there. 
And the last of those hashtags, uh, the contactless coffee one, is the most recent of, what, of the hashtags that we started using during COVID to show that we were a, still able to use the cup in um, a COVID safe manner. Um, we, as part of our campaign, we um, produce lots of uh, social media. Um, so there are lots of images of your cups against very famous backdrops in York. Uh, our student news ran an item on it and we produced a video to show how the uh, cup scheme worked. Um, we also introduced a bring your own cup option into our ordering uh, for catered lunches. So people could order tea and coffee for a meeting, for example, but then choose the bring your own cup option and save some money on that. Um, and all of the cafe outlets also took part in a competition when the Your Cup was first introduced to produce Your Cup displays, which were judged by the customers' votes. To reinforce the sustainability message, at the same time as the Your Cup was introduced, we simultaneously introduced a financial penalty for not using a reusable cup. And this we termed the latte levy. It was a 20p surcharge, um, but the difference is, is that this is ring fenced and the money that is raised from the latte levy is used in sustainability projects, both on and off campus. So people can quite literally see the benefit of the levy. Um, so what effect have we had in, a, in this particular set of nudges? Well, in the first year, we sold uh, nearly 5,000 your cups. Um, although, obviously, we haven't had so many students on campus for most of last year and this year, um, the number of your cups is sold is still rising. Uh, initially, departments uh, were our biggest purchasers because they went out and bought cups for all of their staff or um, collections of cups for visitors, that sort of thing. So they built, bought into the scheme big time. Um, in the first year, our disposable cup usage dropped by 24%. This has now uh, increased. So we've now reduced our disposable cup usage by about 70%. And at the same time, our reusable cupping usage has increased by 82%. Um, we have made adaptations to the scheme as we went along. So instead of introducing a price rise this year for um, hot drinks, we instead we dropped the 20% discount that people would get for a reusable cup. Um, we've also introduced your cup collection bins on campus so that instead of uh, leaving cups um, on counters in cafes, people could actually deposit them in other places around campus to save cups being just left around. Um, we have trialled disposable cup usage in four of our outlets, but we have too many visitors on campus to make it really workable. We have about 40,000 visitors normally, uh, pre-COVID certainly, uh, coming onto campus. So it's very difficult to get all of them to bring a reusable cup or expect them to buy into our cup scheme just for a single visit. Um, so what we've done instead is we've now introduced uh, disposable cup bins. So that's the, the image on the top right in that slide, um, which allows the disposable cups to be separated out from our standard recycling and to be recycled as a separate waste stream. For the latte levy projects, those have been a huge success and um, there's a great pride now in people um, who own a your cup and cite it as an example of their own sustainability actions, but also point to the latte levels as to um, examples of good sustainable practice on campus and beyond. Um, we've raised over £42,000 for the latte levy uh, since January 2019, and that's gone to a huge range of good causes. Uh, things like we have a, um, a zero waste uh, student run um, organic food cooperative on campus and we've uh, provided uh, funds for that to support that. We've provided um, additional recycling stations for particular uh, types of uh, waste on campus to encourage students and staff um, to um, recycle different things. We've also, as Anya showed, the um, cigarette butts um, bins, we've introduced those on campus and used to use those 
to gain feedback from students on different opinions on things, which have been very um, popular. We've introduced um, recycled plastic seating onto campus. Beyond campus, we've um, provided funds for a local community cafe, which is a pay-as-you-go cafe that also uses waste food from shops and um, supermarkets. And we've contributed to uh, the local food bank uh, with supplies of tins uh, paid for from Latte Levy funds. So all in all, it's been a, um, a very successful and um, a very well-liked scheme on campus. Um, and there is much more information available on our website about it um, and about some of the other food waste reduction initiatives that uh, we're now starting. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. And I'm just trying to see now how I can unshare my screen. Um, no, sorry. Thank you, Joe. Uh, may I ask, uh, we've got a question. Uh, what's your loss along the way, people taking cuts they did not pay for uh, by reusing their seeds uh, several times? There is, a, I don't know the numbers on it, I'm sorry. I don't have the figures on that. We certainly have um, not gone through our, our full stock yet of, um, of uh, cups, the, the first lot that we procured, the 20,000. And the, um, the cup bins have also helped with the returns of cups. Um, but we tend to have a cup amnesty as well for departments uh, once a year to sort of say, right, if you've got a stock of your cups that people haven't bothered to return, please bring them back now sort of thing. So at the moment, it's not prohibitive, uh, the cup loss. But the, the latte levy is also partly used to support um, the ongoing scheme. So we did use it to um, also uh, buy the, the cup bins. Thank you. Um well, another question that's probably the last one but uh, I'm, I'm happy to see so many questions been already answered by the speaker, uh, speakers so thank you so much do you allow visitors to bring their own reusable cups I think that was another question to um also um David as well I think uh, yes we David's yeah like, we allow we allow any reusable cup we're not we're not penalizing people for not using ours um and initially as I say we had a discount of 20 pence uh for any reusable cup um, yeah. Now we don't have that, but even so, it hasn't stopped people uh, making use of whatever reusable cup they care to carry around. But the, the advantage of asking is that all they have to carry around is the silica sleeve. They don't have to carry the cup, which we find people much prefer. Yeah, that's exactly the same, Harper Adams. So if somebody brings their own travel mug, or yeah, we 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 uh, we'll let them use that, and they get a discount. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing this creative and systemic way of nudging. And also, it seems like using a smart pun naturally grabs people's attention. Um, unfortunately, um, we don't, we, we're we running out of time to, to open the floor to other uh, potential speakers. But please um, um, let us know if you'd like to be the next speakers to share our, um, your experience. We have webinars on engagement and support, energy and water use, and material use and recycling and travel as well. The next one is on the 20th of May on engagement and support. We'll have a guest speaker from UNEP uh, um, who, who, who can share an exciting campaign on sustainable lifestyles, so which I hope you will find it really interesting um, and also to implement right away. I'd like to thank the presenters for their time and expertise, as well as all the audience for turning in today and uh, tuning in today. Thank you so much. And uh, the recording will be available. Um, um, on our website and YouTube. Thank you so, so much. And please take care and bye now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. You. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Thank you.